hello, hello, hello. Welcome to this week's How To Tuesday. You guys, there's a lot of stuff here. There is a lot of stuff here. I thought, let's keep it simple, Jenny, this week. And Jenny didn't listen. <laughs> she has decided to go all over the place. So this should be fun. It's a mixed media piece. But before I get started and talk, give you the breakdown of what the supplies are and everything, I just want to say thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you. Also, if you like what you're seeing and you're enjoying How To Tuesdays, please like and subscribe and click the bell so you get the personal notifications that it's time for us to have a one-on-one -on -one lesson together today. Um, if you are someone who is digging the lessons but would love a little more instruction, I instruct completely as I film. If you would like to see the real-time version of these lessons, I have a Patreon channel and I would be honored if you would check it out. Um, then we have personal, you know, grab a cup of coffee or tea and put on the video and we just spend an, an hour plus together depending on the lesson itself. I think it sounds pretty fantastic myself. So, and I love being able to do it for you guys. So check it out. And if you join Patreon, you are in, you're in and you get to see the real time videos. So yeah, thank you so much for being here. Um, let's get started. What I'm using right now is the substrate is 140 pound Fabriano hot press watercolor paper. I have done a very, I just kind of went blop, blop, blop because it's almost empty and just kind of tapped it around and then just smeared it. I didn't put a ton on. I just want a little texture on my paper um, because I'm going to do kind of an abstract mixed media piece. Not even kind of, I am going to do an abstract mixed media piece. I took the gesso, went not, not, not nice and clean and make it all perfect. I didn't even take it to the edges all the way. I just wanted to lay down some texture. So I just kind of boop, 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 boop. But I wanted to do it so it would be dry before I started. And I plan on using watercolors on top of the gesso. This isn't something I do. I, can't, I was trying to think, have I done this before? Like in terms of purposely put watercolor down on gesso, I purposely... I do not believe so. I might have done accidentally just because I was in it and I was just grabbing stuff and playing, but I'd like to see what this does. I'd like to see what this does. And if you have gesso grounds, you can put that on, um, is it, no, uh, watercolor ground, sorry, watercolor ground, you can put that down to prep the paper, but let's try with gesso, I can't hurt it. Um, and let's see. So I grabbed my Complexion Prima. This is kind of the palette we're gonna go with today, um, which is, you can see it's well-loved, well-loved. I love this palette so much. Complexion Prima, one of my all-time favorites. And then, uh, last week, these were so much fun, I thought that I would grab them because they go really well with the palette that I have, with the Complexion palette. I thought I would grab them and see um, the magic that they do together today. Again, because I really enjoyed working with those. And then, um, these are my Winsor Newton watercolor brushes. I don't plan on doing a lot of fine detail with these, so I just grabbed a few different ones just to play with. This is the 8, 6, and the 2. <clears throat> and I also would like to play a little charcoal, have a little charcoal. That's one of the reasons I wanted to make these grooves, you know, just some texture, so that I can rub, you know, lay down some charcoal, and then just kind of brush it out and see, just see what happens. I'm really in the experimental mode today right now, so we'll see. And um, I've also, and this is just a brush that I dedicated to, it doesn't matter, it's just a moppy brush, um, I dedicated to my charcoal. I don't get it wet, I don't ever get it wet, I just use it to brush around and dust around my charcoal. I have my General's white and black charcoal pencils. Um, I grabbed a couple different erasers. <clears throat> my Pentel Click eraser, which just does this, and my table, or something's going on. And then this is the Tombow uh, Mono Knock eraser that pops out and if it's too far you can just push back and then push push the back in and then push that back down uh, yeah same thing for the pencil click I have a couple water brushes um, I may or may not use these we'll see I don't know and then I also grabbed my squirt bottle because I want some of the, I want to kind of dilute the watercolor a lot and create layers um, I also have, see, I told you guys, I have a lot of stuff today. Um, I grabbed my carbonyl chalk pastel pencils. I don't know how involved these are going to be, but they're there at the ready just in case I want to use them. If I use them, then I have my handheld mini vac. Turns on. It just handheld mini dust vac. And you just place it over the parts that are done. First, this is what I do. I find the dust and then I place it over the dust and then I turn it on. And then I just tap a little. Don't scrub because that's not going to work. And then it picks it right up. And then I used to, to tape this down, I don't know if I said this, my Pro Artist Tape to my board. And then finally I grabbed 
this. And this is this is not how I normally store them, but remember I'm mid move right now, so um, I have them usually stored really pretty. But this is and see how like <laughs> it makes me a little sad because I got a little bit dinged up. No matter how much I protected them, I mean it's pretty full. But it, they barely move, but somehow everything got covered in something else. So I may or may not use these. I don't know, just for like a little pop of color. But I thought I'd <coughs> put them, um, have them ready just in case. And then last. But not least, I grabbed, this is what I have. I got this in Alcatraz in San Francisco. Um, love Alcatraz, I love San Francisco period, but I thought it was really cool. And I use it for my ink. And I grabbed my Higgins waterproof drawing ink. I thought I would put some in here and then just play with it a little. You'll see what I, my mastermind is trying to concoct, <laughs> trying to come up with. I'm just gonna do a tiny bit, I don't need a lot. This stuff scares me a little because it's the sprout that goes Pushit! like that and then it's permanent, you know, black ink and gotta be super careful. Okay, so I'm not, right now, the first thing I'm gonna do um, is straighten up a little bit and then we'll get started, okay? Thank you so much for being here. Please check out Patreon. Please hit that like and subscribe and click the bell. I love spending time with you every week. Thank you so much for joining me. And if you're new, thank you. Thank you to my peeps that I have joined on Patreon. I hope you love what you're seeing. I'm having a such a good time uh, creating these classes with you. I have a new um, exclusive tier three class coming up for just my tier three Patreons who signed up. So woohoo, something to look forward to. All right, you guys, take care. Thank you. Uh, let's get started.
want to show you guys really quick before I go further. The, I don't know if you can see the textures that are happening. You can see the textures up here. And then also there's a couple of things that magical that happens when it, you can either just let it dry naturally or use the heat gun to let it dry or to dry it. I use heat gun a lot because I'm working and I'm filming stuff. So I have to do it rather quickly. Um, when you do that, it starts to create, you see like the triple layers of magic that's happening here because what it does is it forces it and then it dries the thinnest part first and then creates a crust, like an, um, an outline. And then it goes to the next thinnest part and dries that and so on and so on and so on. So you get these really cool, like, let me see, magical layers that wouldn't happen if you let them dry naturally. It would just be one, it'd still be beautiful, but it'd be one solid. You wouldn't get all these little multiple layers let me get to the layers of stuff which i think is pretty magical personally i love that so and then there's more detail over here in the textures so pretty just so dang cool so far i'm digging the gesso first down put down first uh oh 